and welcome back to Coders of New York. Last time, I think we just hit the home stretch. This time, we need to kill the rest of the night, so, uh, I guess we'll go talk to, what was her name again? I don't remember. Once again, you cross the gate of Prospect Park, huh, and head straight for where you last saw the feral duo. Zarya, that was a personal thing. Uh, not important. Minutes pass, finding no sign of Tamika. You begin to worry that something might have happened to her. Why? Suddenly, you hear rustling coming from the nearby bushes, and it's not the stray cat kind of rustling either. Hey, you in the bushes, you know I can hear you, right? The rustling stops, if only for a second. Suddenly, the bushes part, and Raul walks out, desperately trying to look confident. Yeah, that's only because I wanted you to. Listen, I want to hunt have a word before Tam gets here. She doesn't like you for whatever strange reason, but the way I see it, you're a nuisance at best. Or worse, you're a threat. Just give it some time. You'll warm up to me, Ed. That whole suave asshole routine might work on your dipshit candy friends, but I'm not impressed. Tam is my sister, in every sense of the word that counts. Anything happens to her that I find even remotely your fault, I'm coming after you. Is that clear? Tamika seems pretty capable. Don't think she needs you babysitting her. Oh, she's plenty capable. If the opportunity, she'll rip your guts out if you cross her. What I'm saying is, anything that happens to Tamika, I'm holding you responsible. Accountable, whatever. I was close. <clears throat> All of a sudden, the sound of footsteps reaches your ears. It's just faint enough to not, to not be ostentatious, but still loud enough to hear. You can tell whoever's approaching wants to make their presence known. Both you and Raoul turn just in time to see Tamika emerge from behind an old sycamore tree. It's hard to tell just how long she's been listening in on your conversation. In any case, she walks up and speaks, addressing no one in particular. Did I miss anything? Your brother's worried about you. He seems to think I'm a bad influence. Aww. In an instant, her voice goes from mockingly sweet to stern and unyielding. Her next words sound like a challenge. Is that true, Raoul? You think I can't take care of myself? God damn it, Tam, that's not what this is about, and you know it. I know, big brother, you meant well. You always mean well. Ah, screw it, why do I even bother? And with that, Raoul takes his leave. Tamika waits in silence just long enough to make sure he can no longer hear her, and addresses you. I have a favor to ask. Okay, what is it? I have a, an errand to run. I was hoping you'd come with me. There's a place east of here. It's a short walk. We should be back in two, maybe three hours. Wait, we're walking? That's in on foot? In New York City? I don't like cars, alright? They remind me of old times, before I became... this. It can be distracting. So can we go? Sure, we can go now if you're ready. Well, all right. <clears throat> and so you head towards the parking lot, accompanied by Tamika and a lot of unanswered questions. Answers are for suckers. Following Tamika's directions, you finally arrive at the Evergreen Cemetery, one of the oldest burying grounds in Brooklyn. <clears throat> you enter through the southwestern gate and follow your companion through the sea of tombstones. It's a nice enough place as far as graveyards go much less homogenized than the usual flat field littered with identical markers. Tamika confidently presses on, swerving and weaving along a pre-programmed path. It's clear she's been here more than a few times. Finally, she sh Finally, she takes a sharp left and takes a few more steps down a gravel walkway, coming to a sudden stop in front of a modest headstone. The inscription reads, Luca Santiago, beloved sister and daughter, born 1991, taken from us too soon. With her eyes fixed on the gravesite, she lets out an absent-minded utterance. I need a moment alone. Not long. Five minutes at the most. You look around for a... S you look around in search of a good spot to wait for, her or pass the time. On the far end of a nearby lawn, you notice a lone bench situated under a weeping willow. Suddenly you hear voices, distant but slowly approaching. Judging by the tone and timber... I'm assuming that's right. I, I see that word sometimes, and I've never actually heard it stated. Like, heard it pronounced. You guessing it's a couple of teenagers having to get their late-night kicks among the dearly departed. Might be a good chance to feed. 
Then again, you could just pass the time walking around around the area. It's actually quite nice in a dark and somber kind of way. Well, we're still hungry, so let's do that. Take your time. I think I'll go grab myself a drink. Let's do it quietly. I don't want any trouble. Not here. You leave Tamika alone and follow the voices. Soon enough, you come upon you come upon a couple in their late teens. Judging by the thick eyeliner and their clothes, consisting mostly of black leather and lace, you'd venture a guess that they'd love nothing more than to meet an actual vampire. You're happy to oblige. As you emerge from the shadows, you can feel your you can feel your all intensify. What? Oh. The boy and the girl watch you, completely awestruck, waiting for you to approach. The slightest gesture is enough to shoo the boy away. He sits on a nearby bench and watches, completely enamored as your lips press against the girl's neck. It's a weird sensation to actually feel honest-to-good pride, honest-to-god pride in a victim's blood, but here you are. She's glad to have been chosen in this way. You decide there's no good reason to discriminate and also take a sip from the, from the guy. His B.O. is pretty terrible, but the taste of his blood isn't half bad. Hoping the teen's post-kiss days will make your face just an impression mentioned in their memory, you leave them on the bench just as they let their excited hormones run wild and start making out furiously. You half expect Kadir to materialize, sword in hand, to deal with these loose ends. Or with you for leaving them to roam like you did. You'll need to be more careful in the future. I was surprised that I got absolutely no opportunity to do anything about that. Also, was uh, the upper part of the screen... Also, it's sunrise, apparently. Was the upper part of the screen red before? I don't remember that. Finally, you get back to the tree and find Tamika sitting on the bench. Without a word, you sit next to her. You look over to her, doing your best not to stare. She looks down, crossing her arms and putting her hands on her, sh and putting her hands on her shoulders. <clears throat> In an instant, the ferocious savage disappears, replaced by a vulnerable young woman. I think I'm done. You're okay. I'm better now. Dad, I'm sorry, I guess I should tell you what this was about. She looked away. You can tell she's struggling not to open up to you, so you remain silent, trying not to make her uncomfortable. I was embraced not far from here, in this cemetery. Fitting spot, I suppose. Close to a decade ago. I'd been on the road for a couple years at that point, hitchhiking from one town to another. New York was supposed to be just another stop. Then I met Jezebel. She was strong, smart, independent. Seemed like someone I could trust. Someone I could get close to. She never made me feel inadequate or ashamed. She could hold her own in a she could hold her own in a fist fight, too. Funny thing though, she only wanted to meet during nighttime. I didn't think much of it. Even came up with excuse for busy, eccentric, whatever worked. Until one night she sank her teeth into my neck. Hey, at least you got to know your sire. Can't say the same about myself. For a brief moment, she looks at you with, with genuine sympathy. I'm sorry. Kind of funny, that, because, um, Gangrel are usually, like, smash and grab embraces. They're, like, the only clan known for that. She then looks away, as if slightly embarrassed by her own reaction. Anyway, she left soon after turning me. Now that's the Gangrel thing to do. I think the Conclave of Prague really shook her up. Wait, the Conclave of what now? Prague. It's a city in Central Europe. It was supposed to be neutral ground, a good place to discuss politics and strategy. It ended up almost turning into a civil war. Next thing you know, the Anarchs were expunged from the Camarilla. All they had, all they had done for our kind, the blood they spilled, didn't amount to a thing. The, 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 the Anarchs... The, the Anarchs weren't in the Camarilla. The Camarilla insisted they were, but that's just because at the time, the Camarilla insisted that every vampire was in the Camarilla, whether they wanted to be or not. Uh, in V5, they went kind of crazy and decided that you had to earn your place in the Camarilla, and if you didn't, they would kill you. And they would kill you before you got the chance to try, too. Like I said, they went kind of crazy. Err. I can't blame Jezebel for feeling betrayed, but yeah, even though I still had Raul and Luca, I was still furious. Terrified. Luca died a few years later. Operation Lights Out, they called it. It was a coordinated assault by the Second Inquisition, a genocide by any other name. 
Her family got together, bought up a plot, and buried an empty casket. I guess they wanted some. I guess they wanted some closure. Can't fault them for that. Even though she's not really here, I'd like to come. I'd like to come and visit from time to time. Reminds me of who I am. Keeps me in check. Keeps the beast at bay. Also, this being the place of my embrace, you have to appreciate the level of irony. She straightens up, looks looks at you as if something just occurred to her. Sorry, I don't know what came over me. One minute I'm all grunts and stares, the next I'm giving you my biography. Guess I'm just tired, being scared, alone. You're looking for a place to belong. All the wrong places, it seems. At this point, I'm just looking for someone to believe in. Someone I can give a damn about. You always have Raul. She smiles sadly. Will I? Don't get me wrong, Raul is my brother. The bond between us is not easily broken. But he's got ideas and ambitions of his own. He won't always be there to watch my back. Can't expect that of him. You open your mouth, but before you can make a sound, Tamika motions at you to keep quiet. She lifts her head and sniffs at the air. Her ears perk up. Her eyes widen. Suddenly, she pushes you with all her strength, sending you flying off the bench. Before you even hit the ground, an immense shit ape flies into view and smashes down into the bench, splintering it into pieces. With all the blood surging through your veins, you pounce onto your feet. You look at the mass of fur and muscles that just nearly pulverized you. The creature rears its head, giving you a deranged stare. It then turns to Tamika. She seems utterly terrified, frozen in place as if she literally just saw a ghost. You notice the creature shift its weight as if preparing to pounce. You know we gotta! <laughs> Feeling as if your muscles turn to steel, you ram the creature before it can throw itself at Tamika. The beast flies through the air and smashes its back against the tree. In a matter of seconds, however, it gets back to its feet. Your attack might have surprised it, but it clearly didn't do any real damage. The creature then turns towards you. For a second or two, it moves its mouth awkwardly as if trying to remember how to form words. Hey, how my brown. And that is what happens when you let a gangrel be alone too long. The creature runs off towards a nearby clearing, when all of a sudden a gunshot sends it tumbling onto the ground. A group of well-armed men in body armor emerge from the shadows around it and move in closer to it in an orderly formation. Yet let's not do the stupid thing. Not sure what to make of what's happening, you figure it's best to get out of sight. As you start backing away into the nearby bushes, you notice Tamika following your lead. From the relative safety of the thick foliage, you watch in silence as the group of armed men subdue the creature using steel nets and cattle prods. In the corner of your eye, you catch Tamika looking away as if she found this whole spectacle somehow distasteful. She speaks under her breath, her voice shaking. We get out of here. You see no reason to object. The walk back turns out to be a quiet and somber experience. You both walk in silence, the city hitty, a blur of lights and cars careening by. You look over to Tamika. She seems lost in her thoughts. Finally, you decide to break the silence. You gonna be alright? I think like they really spooked you. I don't know. She catches herself and quickly attempts to hide her vulnerability. Yeah, I think so. Just that I've always heard stories about the scarred one. Never thought I'd actually run into it. The Scarred One? That's the only name he's known by. It's a cautionary tale for young Gangrel. He's what happens when you let the beast take over. Yeah, from what I can tell, that guy probably had like one humanity. You're you're basically just this side of a completely deranged killing machine at that point. He could still make out a couple words, so he wasn't completely gone. It could also just be that he frenzied a lot. Uh, when Gangrel frenzy, they take on an animal trait. And they, they stack up. Like, Elder Gangrel are usually, like, even more horrifying to look at than Nosferatu because, holy shit, they're an amalgam of... They're basically a chimera, but even worse. I always figured him as more of a metaphor, seeing him in real life. Like if a Christian just happened to run into Judas Iscariot one day. In case anybody doesn't know, I'm pretty sure... Uh, let's see, which one was the scariest? I think he was the, uh, 
I think he was the one that ratted Jesus out to the Romans. I don't know. I I, I don't. I, I I can't read. I know what I said. Seeing him hunted down by the SI, I don't know what to think. I don't even know where to start thinking. Just so I can give her some space, you spend the rest of the walk in silence. Soon enough, the familiar tree line of Prospect Park comes into view. There it is again. I'm not going to explain that, by the way. Don't, don't be holding out to the end of the LP, wondering what the fuck Prospect has to do with anything. You either know it or you don't. You stop by the entrance nearest to Tamika's Haven. She keeps walking without a word or so, heard or so much as a glance in your direction. She stops after several paces and turns back towards you. What happened about that not so much as a word or glance? This seems like filler now. And lies. You filled my soul with lies, game. I'm sorry. Thank you for coming with me, but now I have a lot of shit to figure out. Once I do, I'll let you know. And with that, she disappears among the trees. Seeing no point in sticking around, you take your leave. I get the feeling we're not going to see her again. I should probably call it here. We don't have a whole lot of time, and looks like the next one's going to be, uh... The next one's probably going to be real big, and possibly the finale. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. Just going to call it. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.